Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. But technically it's not really a new movie, because it came out 10 years ago today, in 2002. But it was supposed to be an ABC TV pilot of a popular movie series that came out in 1990. If everybody was familiar with the film Home Alone, you know that this movie stars Macaulay Culkin, along with Daniel Stern, Joe Pesci, Catherine O'Hara, John Hurd, and so on. It was a classic comedy that you never thought you would see. But it had all the, the slapstick comedy that you never thought you would enjoy during Christmas time. Which didn't feel like it was a Christmas movie from that idea alone, but it eventually did turn out to be a Christmas movie at this rate. But that film became so popular that they made a sequel to this called Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Once again with the same cast of the first film but with Kevin McAllister being lost in New York. Um, it does somehow play exactly like the first film but a whole lot different. And then there was a third movie that came out after the first two were, were made. But unfortunately, it was a different movie than the first two, because it had a different cast, including Alex D. Lynn from the movie uh, One Fine Day, um, who just went on to do uh, McDonald's commercials, decided to play the role as simply Alex, but almost has some of the humor that Kevin McAllister has had in the original film. But this was different. Instead of two crooks, we now had four spies who were going after the chip. I didn't think the film wasn't that bad compared to the first two, but it was definitely not better. And I had to disagree with Roger Ebert on that review, because it isn't better. But anyway, when I heard that there was going to be a fourth sequel, I thought hey, maybe, like the third movie, maybe they're going to come up with something different. But all the wise, it doesn't matter. Because it was going to be an insult to my intelligence. And you know what? I was right. Because ABC, the network that plays almost every show out there, was going to pick it up for a pilot episode of a new TV series based on the movie. Well, after seeing the fourth movie... I could see why it failed to become one. And I'm just glad to say that even if it was going to be a TV series, it was going to be messed up as it is. And it sure was. Anyway, the movie stars French Stewart from Stargate and Fur Walk from the Sun, Eric Avari, also from Stargate, Missy Powell from Galaxy Quest, Big Fish, and Dodgeball. Barbara Babcock, Joanna Going from Wild Earp, Jason Behe from Monkey Shines, and Mike Weinberg from Life as a House playing Kevin McAllister. As the movie begins, it's set in somewhere in Chicago, which doesn't look like anything that was set in Chicago, Christmas has become really bad to Kevin McAllister as his parents, Peter and Kate, um, played by Jason Behe and Barbara Babcock, had been separated for the past eight months. And things at home with Kate are difficult enough without the bullying deal to Kevin and his older brother, Buzz, and his older sister, Megan. Peter invites Kevin and his siblings to stay with him with his rich new girlfriend, Natalie, played by Joanna Going, for Christmas. Kate simply offers the kids love and affection, the kids side with Kate, but Kevin is thinking hard about the invitation. On Christmas Eve, Kevin sneaks to Natalie's place to spend the holidays with Peter, his dad. Um, Natalie lives in the mansion where almost everything was respond to a remote control commands. Butler Plescott and kindly housekeeper Molly are at Kevin's beck and call. 
Peter and Natalie decided to leave for a while, so which Kevin pretty much just uh, hangs around at the house doing whatever he wants in his bigger mansion, which leads into bigger trouble once Marf Merchants, played by uh, French Stewart, replacing Daniel Stearns' role, along with his new partner and wife, they both got married somehow, I don't know how does this happen, named Bera, played by Missy Powell. At Christmas, they will be picking up some house guests at the airport, including an 11-year-old crown prince. Kevin witnessed his old enemy, Marf Merchants, and Marf's wife, Bera, breaking into the case of the mansion with the help of, of the insider, who gave Marf and a remote control to it. Natalie and Peter didn't believe in Kevin at first about what was going to happen. So Prescott says that he saw nothing, which makes Kevin that he's the insider to the whole game. So Peter decided that they should all love each other deep down inside. Marv Spira's plan, however, was to kidnap the prince and decided to make their move on Christmas morning. Upon learning from all about this, Kevin rigs the house with booby traps, cheaply booby traps if you ask me. But then comes Christmas morning as Kevin is left at the mansion while Natalie and Peter go out to pick up the guests. In their absence, Mara and Barra breaks in again looking for the prince, but they didn't know that they find Kevin in there with a whole bunch of painful, cheaply made booby traps for them. Yeah, I couldn't believe I saw this for myself, and by the time I finally finished this piece of shit, it was so, so bad. It was stupid all around. I couldn't believe this movie was made for the history of this. Prior to the fact that Daniel Sternin took over the role um, as Marth, I, I pretty much agree with him that he says it's a total insult garbage. Because it really is a total insult garbage. I didn't like the fact that Kevin McAllister was played by a kid who obviously doesn't know how to act. Keeps making these annoying expressions with the infamous scream and so on. It just irritated the hell out of me. I didn't like the fact that he played that kind of character. And the fact that he was considered to be 9 years old. He looks more like a 5 year old than a 9 year old. Makes no fucking sense. And the whole cast of the film, although maybe I give French Stewart some credit and Eric Gavari, I just thought it was pretty badly made. There were some jokes about Joanna Goings' character, Natalie, being hyperventilated after seeing something going wrong. That wasn't funny. And all these booby traps that they put in, in this movie were going on way too long. It wasn't even funny compared to the booby traps you see in the original films. Now they were funny. This was not funny. Also these transitions that look like something out of a Windows Movie Maker type of thing did not work at all. That was so cheaply done. I could tell this was definitely a TV movie all the way around. I'm glad this wasn't released in theaters because I would imagine what it definitely would look like. It was so cheaply made I couldn't believe it. But no matter what though the first two will always be better. Well, I also read that there's going to be a fifth Home Alone movie called Alone in the Dark. Wow, almost that's the same title as the Ubi Bowl disaster from 2005 based on the video game. That was such a terrible movie. Go figure. Anyway, so I give Home Alone 4, out of all places, zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.